Hello all and welcome, and I'm the realist philosopher, and this is the realist den, where it's 100% raw, 100% real, 100% of the time, baby! Hoo <laughs> so how y'all doing today? Hope you're all doing good, fine, and well. So, yes, there's more trans craziness in the news. This stuff just keeps getting crazier and crazier. You know, I gotta wonder, was it like this in ancient Rome before the fall? Before they just opened the gates and let the barbarians in, was this kind of stuff happening? Were there a bunch of trannies running around the city, shaming people for being transphobic <laughs> and not calling them the proper pronoun? <laughs> I wonder. Uh, so if this is from the Daily Wire. Transgender woman wins discrimination suit. $20,000 for being cut from woman's football team? Really? Now, first of all, I don't know if this is like the uh, 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 soccer football, but I guess it is. I mean, I don't think there's a football team where the women are actually playing American football, so I guess this is soccer. They call it football in Europe, right? Yeah, I, I think we Americans are actually the only ones that call it soccer because we have to be so different. <laughs> all right, so Christina Ginther, weird name, a biological man. Mm, bi what do you mean biological? It's a man. Yeah, it's a biological man, all right, who identifies as a woman. Oh, so identification is different than biological status, right? So how I identify is a different category than biological status, right? So they're trying to uh, uh, automatically make this distinction, right? No, there's no difference. You can't identify as something else. I could identify as a rock. That doesn't make me a rock. Won a discrimination lawsuit this week after being rejected from playing on an all-women's Minnesota football team due to safety concerns. All-women's Minnesota football team. So I'm wondering, was this a private team? Private club? Uh, was it a uh, professional team? Let's get to the meat of this. Mm, Ginther, who's nearly six feet tall. Well, that's not a big deal. There's a lot of women that are uh, nearly six feet tall. Well, maybe not a lot, but some. And a second-degree black belt in karate... That's no big deal. Whoop the freaking doo dog. Uh, second degree black belt don't mean anything. It's, it's that the, the karate shit don't work. Was awarded a total of twenty thousand dollars for what? <laughs> ten thousand in punitive damage and ten thousand for emotional distress. <laughs> the forty six. Oh god, that's so ridiculous. Uh, for safety concerns, seems rational to me. Big dude running around ramming into ladies. The 46-year-old claims he was initially welcomed by the Minnesota Vixen football team, which was then part of the Independent Women's Football League. Independent Women's Football League. I'm still not sure whether or not this is a professional team or something. I mean, uh, it sounds private, though. I don't get this. Since when can't private groups choose who they want to associate with? Whatever happened to a freedom of association, right? <laughs> but is it a job? I mean, does it pay money? If it pays money, it's a job, so they can't discriminate. But, but, but it's a guy! Uh, yay, yay. Uh, so during pre-tryout practices in 2016, but when team owner Laura Brown learned that Ginther was actually a biological male, she informed Ginther that biological men were barred from playing in the league due to safety concerns. Very interesting. Very interesting. So a woman discriminating against a dude. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Okay, so you're a dude. I don't recognize trans people as being something other than their biological gender, which is the same as your sex. I don't care what people say or how they try to change the word gender to mean something else, meaning how you identify. That's a bunch of nonsense. So an attorney for the team, Greg Van Gompel, said Brown instead offered Ginther a role assisting the coach or helping the team keep stats during their games. <laughs> Water boy. <laughs> well, you can't be all the D, but you can be a water boy. Isn't this pathetic, by the way? This dude is such a crappy player that he needs to try out for the women's team. Hey, dude, if you're such a good soccer player, football, whatever, why don't you go try out for a men's team? I'm afraid of getting pounded into oblivion, so I want to play with the women's. <laughs> this is so stupid. You, you know what pops into my mind when I hear about these dudes who pretend to be women or want to be women or think they're women, whatever mental illness they're suffering from, what pops into my mind is that they're afraid to compete with the men. When these dudes try out for female teams, why would you, as a man, want to try out for a female team 
or a female sport of any kind knowing the type of advantage that you have. You couldn't possibly be so cognitively dissonant that you don't know you have an advantage. Thicker, denser bones, more muscle, you're faster. Something like 1% of women, less than 1% of women in this world can be stronger and faster than 99% of the men, right? So it's a very small number of women who could actually compete with men on an even playing field. So why would you do it? Why would you do it? Because you want to feel like a winner. <laughs> but if you do something like this, you're a freaking loser because you can't compete with other people of your own gender. And gender means sex, pinheads. Uh, so, yeah, they offered him the job of a you know, glorified water boy. He further explained that Brown was bound by IWFL policy. It says a player may not play in the IWFL unless they are now always have been legally and medically a female as determined by their birth certificate and driver's license, said Van Gompel, according to NPR News. So it sounds like this uh, IWFL is a private league of amateur or pro-am players. So they should absolutely have the right to pick and choose who plays on their teams. Unless, of course, you identify as a female. Ginther refused, to off, refused the offer from Brown, saying he violated, felt violated from the rejection. So, well, it's all about feelings with these people, right? I feel, how do you feel violated? by? What does that mean, you feel violated? I don't know what that means. I know what it means if I feel violated, if somebody actually violated me, like if I was sleeping or something and somebody stuck their finger up my ass, I would feel violated, right? Uh, you know, or if somebody, uh, you know, knocked me out with roofies would really have to be the case and uh, then stuck their finger up my ass, I would feel violated, right? How is this violation? Yeah, you can be the water boy. They offered you a place on the team, just not the place you wanted. <laughs> well, I became trans to get everything I want, God damn it. You can't deny me, so I'm going to take you to court and get a lot of money out of your ass. Yeah, I'm going to get the moolah. And he did. She said, well, your numbers were good, but in the process of drawing up player contracts, contracts, uh, see, so there must be some kind of a ex monetary exchange going on here. We looked at our social media and found out that you're transgender. We're called Ginther. So this person's passable just by looking at him? Hmm, I'm skeptical. Uh, Ginther recalled Brown telling her the league didn't allow players who were born biologically male because of safety issue. Safety issue. So this person lied. Didn't reveal. See, that right there should be enough to exclude you because even if they did allow you onto the team, uh, uh, if you were trans, you would need to let them know up front, right? I mean, that's, that's grounds for dismissal from any job, right? You know, lying on application, and if this is somehow a paid position, he lied. So that's, in my mind, grounds to deny this person a position. I hung up the phone and just felt violated. I don't know what that means. What? I mean, just the sense of, I'm a freak, I'm a defective, I'm not worthy to be with this team, Ginther said. What, that's all in your head. Did the owner of this team say that? They didn't say anything of the kind. That's your mental dysfunction, okay? That's you projecting how you feel about yourself. Uh, on being found out as trans, Ginther said, I don't know what could have given me away. <laughs> oh, really? Let's take a look at the picture. Ah, perhaps that gave you away, or perhaps the fact that you put on your social media page that you're a trans, you dummy. Hey, yeah, yeah, but yeah, look, oh, it is, it's actual football? Oh, so they're wearing, look at this, they got, the, they got the, uh, the protective helmets and the shoulder pads, chest pads. So this is actual ram into somebody football. Yeah, you can't do that. I, I, I'm sorry. That, that's, that's ridiculous. This, this political correctness crap is going way too far. Dudes cannot play p football with broads, okay? Or how about that recent uh, spate of uh, MMA fighters who are guys pretending to be broads, beating the hell out of broads, <laughs> cracking their skulls and shit? Dude, this is out of control, man. Is somebody going to challenge this stuff? Before some broad gets killed by some dude who thinks he's a dudette. The stereotype is that women like to ask if a dress makes them look fat. He said, I asked, does that make me look like a boy? I'm looking at this picture, and that's, that's a big broad. And not a very fit one either. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I can't see sunlight between those legs. And I, I see some fat rolls there. So uh, if this person is an athlete, mm, they're not in very good shape. So a discrimination suit against the team in the league was filed in 2017, citing a violation of the Minnesota Human Rights Act. So is this human rights bullshit, isn't it? 
They, they got the same thing up in Canada with the Human Rights Council that uh, uh, j basically circumvents any due process. They can just fine you without any kind of due process court proceedings. Oh, you're in violation. $150,000. Oh, you're in violation. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Human right. How do you have a human right to plan a female football team if you're a man? I love this shit. I, I, I have a human right to do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> There's, there should be no strictures on me at all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Which protects individuals from being discriminated against by businesses based on sexual orientation. Uh, yeah, that has to do with frequenting an establishment as a customer, not actually working for that business. Discriminated by a business based on sexual business. Now for employment or for you, you know, actually shopping, going, receiving services and goods from that business, right? There's, I would think, a delineation between the two. Though notably, Ginther won on the basis of being trans, not gay. Oh, boy. A Dakota County jury sided with Ginther, the ruling, the first of its kind in Minnesota, making women-only teams or groups within the state potentially discriminatory. <laughs> okay, and now, um, you know what? Initially, uh, I thought, this is kooky, by the way, but I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, you see. It's good. You see? <laughs> now women-only groups can be infiltrated by men. So Ginther played football in a different women's league, the Women's Football Alliance, during the 2017-2018 seasons. Again, I don't get this. If you want to play football, wouldn't you want to challenge yourself, right? I have to play as a wayman. Hey, loser. Oy vey. Look at this dude. Oy vey. Look at this spindly little girl to his uh, left with these skinny little chicken legs. And look at this chick on his right trying to look all big, but, you know, she's just kind of fat. <laughs> then look at this. Woo! Oh, boy. That's funny. I, I mean, he's just going to crush them. But this is great, right? Because women are going to start to suffer the same kind of infiltration that men have. You have a male-only club. You have a male-only gym. You have a group, something that's male-only. We got to get in. We want to get in there. Women always have to be where men are, right? They can't help it. They need the attention. They need male attention. They want to be where the men are, okay, so they can ride our freaking coattails, right? Yes, we need to be mentored by men. Well, now, ladies, you have men infiltrating you and your groups. It's wonderful. Although this is kooky as hell, <laughs> the way they're doing it. But more power to wackadoos who want to infiltrate female-only groups. More power to you. Go right ahead. You have my blessing. <laughs> 20,000 bucks. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I bet you ladies ain't so keen on equality now, are you? You can no longer have your female-only football teams. And very soon, it's going to be all female-only things. Female-only gyms. Bye-bye. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> those are illegal, too. And if anybody has a female-only gym out there, you can sue them, and you'll automatically win because it's 100% against the law in all 50 states. The only reason that female-only gyms exist is because no one has taken them to court and nobody wants to go to them because nobody wants to go and work out in a place where there's a bunch of big, fat, ugly broads, right? <laughs> the kind of broads that, generally speaking, go to a gym that's frequented by a lot of men or good-looking broads who want men to check out their asses, thoughts, essentially. So, uh, you know, yeah, but if you want to hit them where it hurts, sue them. Like this dude did. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Should more men do this, gussy up and pretend to be waymen just so they can get into these groups and then get kicked out and then sue? Is that a good tactic for making women change their ways and move away from this equality of outcome BS? Let me know that in the comments as well, and please like and subscribe, and, and also check out my podcast. I make a podcast twice a week that, believe it or not, is more raw and more real than the videos that I place on this channel. I have two Patreons, one for once a month donations, or if you're feeling really generous, you can sign up and donate per podcast. And I make two a week, so eight a month. It's up to you. And please follow me on Twitter. And Facebook, so you get updates of whenever I post a new piece of content or 
just post something on Facebook. I frequent a lot of groups there, and that's it. I am the Realist Philosopher, and I wish you a good day. Take care.